according to the course material that I give you today. As scheduled, we are going to deal with rabbit and beam issue, okay, as a second week, especially focusing on parametric modeling, okay, rabbit and parametric modeling. Rabbit is parametric modeling tool. Beam has parametric modeling or parametric design aspects, okay, one of the main characteristics. So, by using Rabbit, especially Rabbit Family Editor today, we're going to use the Rabbit Family Editor today, okay, in the lab exercise, to figure out in practice what is the difference between geometric modeling you used to use before, such as SketchUp, Rhino, 3D Max AutoCAD. You may feel parametric modeling, parametric design is really uh, intuitive and easy to use when you learn its interface, but in your actual use, you may realize, you may be recognized that it is really hard. According to my other course from your senior students, some of them really catch fast and doing really well, but some of them couldn't follow any of my instruction and drop the submissions, failure, problems. Okay, we'll see what's going on today for you guys. Okay, anyway, for the lecture, we're going to deal with the beam enabled building information modeling approach using Revit and parametric modeling using some parametric modelers such as Autodesk Vasari and Family Editor. So here are a list of lab exercises, but in a nutshell, red fonts, okay, your name, level 7, College of Human Ecology building, which contains all floors, okay, not all floor well designed. What I mean is first floor and fifth floor, two floors, interior modeled, I mean interior walls and doors. And then you can make this building kind of realistic, okay, main first lobby, first floor, first gate, I mean main gate, main entry, main entrance, and this room interior or library room interior. And also given custom object, this window system, okay? We don't have such window system in Revit. So given window system, you can load this one into your project. Another one, some type of interior design. You don't need to design very well, okay? Focus is not aesthetic aspects of design. Just download uh, Revit family file components such as Homer Miller chairs, workstations from very popular websites such as Autodesk Seek or uh, RevitCity.com and so on. Okay, I let you know how to use such given existing libraries in order to add to your project, okay? So some of your interior design and camera view and lots of more things such as ceiling plan, lighting system, okay? We're gonna deal with such things. And space object, room schedule, some more applications and so on. And today you're gonna learn how to extract floor plan CAD files and plan views, 3D files. And we're gonna import them in 3D Max, okay, to figure out how Revit exports geometric files and so on. Okay, let's move on to the lab, uh, sorry, lecture. A quick review, okay, BIM and design visualization. Still designers, we need 3D visualization, okay? So I showed you Revit already has very powerful visualization tool like this, Revit model and its photorealistic render, another render, render example. Actually this render example done by someone else in this website five years ago, okay? Five years ago. And this one even eight years ago done by very early version of Revit. Okay, this one done by me yesterday, okay, 
two and a half hours. Three hours you need. I used my desktop, very fast computer, but it took two and a half hours, which means your computer, three, four hours, probably. Okay. This is sample model in Revit 2016. But I installed a new camera and new view and tried to render this one in the best quality. Okay, that's why it took more than two hours. But anyway, no retouch, okay? It shows very good visualization output like this. Today also we're gonna learn how to make this kind of custom 3D view using your camera and how to render, okay? Take a look at this website. AEC Bytes is one of the famous popular website, some academic articles and news about BIM. AEC here means, as you know, architecture engineering construction. So around a year ago, when Revit 2016 released, Dan Stein reported this article, okay? Some new features of photorealistic rendering engine in Revit 2016. This is same scene, same render, but done by Ray Tracer in Autodesk, default renderer, and this is mental ray renderer. They are looking different in their texture, representation, and colors. But anyway, by using given geometry or components, you can get this kind of visualization. Even people, okay? Reflection, photorealistic ray tracing based rendering. Simply because this one done by Manta Ray, the same as 3D Max, okay? So anyway, for the purpose of design visualization, design representation, Revit is really powerful for modeling, okay? Even better than SketchUp or any other easy to use tools. But if you are interested in using 3D Max, still interested in 3D Max mentally and custom setting, this model easily imported into Max using CAD file, DWG file, or FBX file, which has material, okay, Autodesk material. So as a default, something like daytime, no artificial lights turned on, but anyway, you can get this, this kind of, this quality of render output. If you import that into 3D Max, controlling some artificial lights, or in, even in Revit, turning on artificial lights, and then you can get this kind of night view, okay? Nice in rendering by using 3D Max or Revit, anyway. Okay, another review, solid modeling in Revit. We, we know that Beam Tools, Revit, totally has parametric modeling features as well as based on solid modeling features, okay? Something advanced from top to bottom, okay? So this class, this semester, we are dealing with this area, okay, all together. So that's why I showed you this surface-based model approach and solid modeling. But still, we need to control this kind of surface. Today, I let you know how to make this kind of surface in Revit. But something different from surface-based modeler and Revit. What's the different things? We have to figure out, find out, okay? In the lecture as well as lab exercise. So, so far we have used those tools, but now we are using Revit and some other BIM tools, okay? Totally solid model base. Solid model has this kind of Boolean operation, Boolean operation, union intersection, plus minus, okay? Equation-based operation based upon solid 3D geometry. So that is why I told you how Revit creates solid geometry using solid blend, extrusion, revolve, sweeping, solid sweep, void forms. Some Void means minus, okay, A minus B. So this kind of operation creates anything you want. Let's take a look at real Revit example, example number one. Okay, 
Actually, this is not Revit. This is Vasari, but Baza Autodesk Vasari nowadays expired, but you can still use free. You don't need to install Vasari. It's free. But now, actually, it was expired, but totally same to Revit and Revit Family Editor. Okay, no difference. That is why I put this one. Take a look. This is Revit Family Editor. How to make a cartoonal panel frame in solid modeling approach. Okay, if this is SketchUp, you need to make some rectangle shape and push pull to create 3D. But in solid modeling, simply say in Revit Family Editor, this is this rectangle shape is a reference line. Okay, reference means sort of referencing geometry, not geometry itself. Okay. To create a solid geometry, we need those references. First one is pass definition, rectangle shape, and 90 degree perpendicular to that rectangle. There is another small rectangle, which means section profile, another reference. So simply click this small one and large one all together using control key and click create a form button. And then you can make this kind of 3D solid. Revit auto detects how to create the 3D form based upon user selection, user input. When users click create a form button. Okay, example number two, how to make a panel with a hole. What I mean is this kind of panel, okay? In 3D Max or AutoCAD, we need to draw something like this rectangle shape with a circle and extrude. But actually, it's not easy to figure out which part is void or solid in surface-based 3D. So we have to precisely click the solid part. But in Revit, two objects we need to define. Okay, The first one is rectangle panel with the thickness. But there is no parameter in this example. But anyway, second object is cylinder object, which has parameter radius, OK? If you put this parameter, you can control this parameter later, OK? You can change the radius of this hole in your project as one of the parameters in properties window in Revit, OK? Anyway, simply A minus B operation returns this panel. This is not just simple geometry. This is parametrically defined beam component, which means you can update easily radius value. Okay? If you put the thickness of this one, when you define this one, also you can control the thickness. Okay, another review, parametric modeling in Revit totally based on feature-based modeling. In other words, sweeping, okay, section profile and its pass. Also, I told you very important concept, part and assembly approach. What is part and assembly approach? This is really critical, different distinct features from geometric modeling, okay, in this parametric modeling. Okay, take a look, last week example. What if this one single component is a part? Okay, one part has one rectangle panel and the standing bar, okay? So you have parameter, height of standing bar and size of panel. Okay, this is your part. And what is your assembly? Your assembly is this curved surface. Reference geometry, okay? Only surface as a reference. Final assembly can be built using those components totally based upon your reference geometry. So in this location, standing bar's height should be longer than this one, okay? Totally adaptive to your surface design. That is part and assembly approach, OK? So that's the design, I mean, parametric design, or the term parametric modeling definition. 
Why we need such design? I told you nowadays we are using some totally non-uniform, totally unique design features applied in both building exterior and interior like this, okay? Also take a look, this kind of patternized geometry. They can be just dummy geometry, but it's not good for manufacturing, constructing real interior. What if this is controllable parametric model? We can easily separate piece by piece in actual construction, purposed documentation or something else. OK, let's take a look some parametric design tool, OK? Using Revit Family Editor and Autodesk Vasari, OK? I told you, Autodesk Vasari is mini version of Revit, and it's free. You can search Vasari, and you can find out its website. But nowadays, if you click Vasari web page, you may encounter Autodesk plugin, Dynamo website, OK? That's the, their current priority in this kind of preform and non-uniform design in parametric approach. OK, this is Vasari interface and the old Vasari interface. But if you access this website, you may see Dynamo logo and installation pass. Take a look, Vasari interface, 100% same to Revit and Revit Family Editor, OK? Take a look, point, line, and splines, rectangle shapes, geometric shapes. But they are reference, OK? You can model real model or reference. We're going to mo model reference lines using those tools today. And we're going to control 3D geometry, some, something non-uniform today. OK. And also, in today's lab exercise, we're going to create this kind of shape. What is this? Take a look. What is this? This is Revit interface, OK? Precisely say this is Vasari interface, but same to Revit. Take a look. You may not know the scale of this object, but actually, they are just building mass, OK? Building size, building scale. Take a look, this level notation, which means one level. With distance between the levels, probably 4 meter, 5 meter height, which means this box, this shape has around 10, 20 meter height, OK? Very large scale building masses. So last week, we used some wall object, O object for creating building, this building using AutoCAD file. But today, we're going to get started lab exercise with mass object, OK? Mass object is this type of geometric chunk, OK? Box shape, diagonal shape, circular shape, or any type of preform surface. And you can put this kind of building skin, facade study using patterns, OK? So they are just the patterns right now. But the patterns can be filled with your own physical components, such as cottonal system, windows frame, glasses, and so on, OK? So they are mass objects defined in Revit. So you can make any type of building mass very easy way. Just simply click new mass and name it and draw based upon your plan. But actually, the easiest way and some powerful way of creating mass is just to use Google Earth, Google Map. Import Google Map at the bottom of it and make building mass using some building outline, perimeter shape. Exactly same method, the same mechanism last week you used, OK? AutoCAD plan and make interior walls, partitions, doors, something like that approach. You can load Google Map, Google Us, satellite picture for your site. And you can make some chunk of building masses, except to your site, OK, except to your building. 
very architectural approach, the same way architects use, okay? Revit supports that kind of approach. But SketchUp, 3D Max, they don't care, okay? Whether your design project is building project or not, interior project or not, okay? Game character design or not, it doesn't care. But this is building information modeling tool, so it supports exactly same approach and mechanism to architects' approach, okay? So using Vasari, what is a parametric design approach? Let's take a look at cotton panel modeling example. Part and assembly approach, okay? Let's take a look at this is part. In today's lab exercise, you're gonna learn how to make this kind of part definition. Very simple part, but I told you it's simple, but probably some of you may feel this is really complicated to make, to define, because something different from your conventional tools like SketchUp. Anyway, this part, just simple definition, which is constraints. Rectangle shape reference lines should be changeable, okay? But whatever it changed, long rectangle, small rectangle, large rectangle, whatever it is, this shape constrained, okay? Four end points constrained to the end point of rectangle shape, which means any type of rectangle shape can be loading this part, okay, anywhere. And also you can put H height with this parameter for controlling the thickness of this frame. So if you load this one to your project, your design, the surface of this is building mass, okay? This building mass going to be having this part for its design. Something different height and with this definition. What's different? thing from SketchUp was 3D Max model. Rabbit knows how many panels it has. In other words, the panel definition should be defined by you in UV grid numbers. This case, 10 by 10, which means total 100 panels. What if you change 12 by 10 and then totally auto update, okay? Auto recalculate and place again. But it takes time, several seconds, sometimes a couple of minutes, sometimes freeze, freeze looking, very slow. That is why we need to use some expensive computers for Vim and Rabbit. But anyway, successfully load using part for making this assembly without any problem. How about this kind of totally freeform surface? I told you, we can define surface as a reference. For what? For making this kind of structure, okay? By using reference surface in surface definition, we can apply this part to that surface for making this pattern, okay? Take a look. Different scale, different size, different depths and width height panels, but totally uh, appropriately loaded geometric shape. Even in this case, you can control number of panels, okay, 10 by 10, 5 by 5, whatever, okay? We can easily change. Take a look at this example. Actually, I made this mass model in a couple of minutes to make this building is looking like Seoul City Hall, okay? As an example, quick example. Front side of this Seoul City Hall is something similar to th this shape, okay? Not exactly the same, but anyway, a little bit different, but anyway, at this time, the same part I loaded to this surface definition, and then you can find out this shape without any problem. Take a look. At this time, 
I defined rectangle shape curtain panel system using parametric definition and loaded to freeform surface of building mass. And then, no problem, successfully loaded this structure, this part, into your project. So parametric design using Revit Family Editor. Let's take a look at Revit Family Editor example. So this is the interface of Revit Family Editor. Okay? If you open Revit Family Editor, Revit will ask you, what is your template? In that case, you need to choose one of the template. For example, door template, window template, wall template. At this time, this is cotton panel template. Okay, cotton panel means cotton or system, window system, okay, for general buildings scheme. So I choose that family uh, template and open this one and define this parametric panel. And then this is Revit project view, okay. I click mass object, create mass. In this mass definition, I take a look. This is surface, OK? I told you, in real world, there is no surface. But in Revit, anyway, you have capability to deal with this kind of geometric shape, surface model. This is 3D, freeform surface. And I, OK, take a look this one again. There is an evidence of this, this interface is Revit Family Editor. Take a look, load into project. This icon means this part defined in Family Editor and you can load this part into your project. If you click this one, you can open that part using this property window, okay? So define this surface as an assembly reference geometry and then part successfully loaded to the surface using 10 by 10 UV grid definition, okay? So this reference geometry is the reference surface of this structure, okay? There is still blue line, okay? This blue line means reference surface line. So this one is a very simple and straightforward intuitive case to show you how to import part into your project. So something zoom in screenshot, okay? This one single part, this part, this part, they don't have same geometry, okay? Something different, but exactly same constraint. Rectangle, one single rectangle shape has one pattern defined in this Revit surface definition part. So let's take a look at something more about cotton wool systems, okay? By using something different aspects of geometric model and parametric model. This is Seoul City Hall, okay? Seoul City Hall, very famous design. Someone says it's very, it's kind of worst design in Seoul, but anyway, I don't, I don't want to talk about some, that issue right now. Actually, this one has rectangle shape surface geometry like this. Not, uh, sorry, triangular shape, not rectangle. But anyway, let's take a look at inside of this building. Very complicated stru truss wall, truss structure for sustaining the structure of this cotonal system. Take a look, early phase of design. This is designer's visualization, design presentation purpose rendering. Take a look. Very roughly rendered and designed model, okay? In early phase of design. Take a look, a little bit detailed, okay? Now it has some thickness, but still rectangle shape. And even more developed design model, but take a look. Now this one has double truss structure. But take a look, real picture. Totally different, okay? Not same. Because this is not 
a beam project example, not parametric modeling example. I don't care they use the parametric modeling beam or not, it doesn't matter, but I like to show you the difference between conventional design approach and separated construction approach. In this way, design should be changed or something different from as-built structure, okay? But take, let's take a look. Next case, Dali Museum located in LA, designed by HOK, okay? So this one is very simple rectangle shape building, but one unique structure, building core system and cotonal system. Middle of this building structure, okay? So this one done by Rabbit. Let's take a look at those two real pictures. They are real picture and take a look this triangular shape structure. In Rabbit Family Editor, today you can find out this kind of structure already defined in Rabbit, okay? So, in Rabbit Family Editor, you can define one single rectangle shape, and in Rabbit Project, you can define envelope geometry using your own reference surface definition. And then they can be loaded in this way, and you can count how many, you don't need to count, okay? Rabbit knows how many panels and how to make some joint pieces or some details and so on. So this is an example. Let's take a look at visualization purposed representation you used to use before last semester. Using 3D Max, they are all 3D Max geometry, okay? In 3D Max, you can define this kind of polygons, okay? Number of polygons using editable poly or tessellation, whatever. Something looking architectural, building skin, walls, cotonal system, window system, and so on. And you can make something organic sh shape, organic form, non-uniform, free form design, anything else. But 3D Max doesn't know how many patterns, how many panels it has, okay? It doesn't know and it doesn't care. But now you see parametric modeling controls piece by piece, pattern by pattern, separate approach to part and assembly, okay? So take a look. Based upon this geometric definition, topological definition, so far we used this geometry-centered edits, okay, using editable poly or modifiers or updating vertex edge polygon structure and so on using the final model, okay. But in this parametric modeling approach in BIM tools, in Revit, we can separate part and design, okay, part and assembly. So if you update part, you don't need to take care of its design. Each part going to be updated in automation. What if you want to change design? You don't need to control part, okay? Or well, you can control both at the same time. Object-oriented modeling and design. For editing, easy to update, easy to update information. What if you want to use this part to totally different design? Reusable, okay? No problem. What if you want to change part from same project design? Simply change the part, okay? Using property window, using library. They have pros and cons. I don't mean that 3D Max always not a good choice, okay? Sometimes 3D Max sketch up. Sometimes it's even powerful than Revit. They have pros and cons. Geometric design, free to edit, good to visualization, okay? But it's just a design model, not reusable part, not a beam. But how about beam model, Revit model? Freely applicable to any building surface, reusable parts, beam supportive, but comparatively hard to edit geometric shape because they all constraint-based 
parametric definition complicate. Not that good to visualize, but I believe sometimes their cones going to be getting better. And I think we, it's, it's very uh, affordable and powerful tool for anything, visualization, modeling, rendering, information, visualization, applications, whatever. But the problem is comparatively, this one is heavyweight, okay? Computer powers, you need fast CPUs, more memories, and so on, okay? Expensive, comparatively, right now. Okay, cotton parametric modeling demonstration using Rabbit system. Let's take a look at this case, okay? For the first, first case, I like to introduce you how to make custom object in using Rabbit, the first one. Actually, not the Rabbit. Rabbit is not the only one sole option in BIM tools. Actually, there are more tools. Those examples are, have done 11 years ago by me at Georgia Tech, okay? 2005, I made those examples with my colleagues. The purpose was to present this slide to local architects at the time. Local ar architects at the time, architect firms, uh, SOM, HOK, Parkinson and Will, and so on, okay? They came to Georgia Tech Digital Building Lab and we introduced them how to create custom parametric object using cotton examples, okay? This one is rabbit example. Second one, example number two is same object but Bentley system, Bentley architecture. Actually, I was in charge of making Bentley system, this one done by my colleague. But anyway, just for your information, let me show you demonstration, okay, example. Okay, take a look. Interface looking very coarse, simply because this is, I told you, 11 years ago. Very early version of Rabbit. At that time, the program name was Rabbit Building, okay? Rabbit Building. Rabbit Building version six, five, seven, I don't remember. But anyway, 2005, we used the Rabbit Family Editor when you create something in parametric tool, you have to think, okay? You have to plan the process. Firstly, physical shape modeling, and then parametric modeling, some constraints, which enables us to use this one to any part, sorry, any surface, any assembly, okay? Any design project. So by using family editor, defining section profile, elevation first, and some equations, constraints, formula, to create 3D solid as a part, okay? This part now has width height parameter, and they can be loaded into this project. So if we have part one, two, three, part N, they have parameters, link together with constraints and make an assembly. Part two, three, all other parts can be loaded to same project, same assembly. So with this and height of a part, with this and height of the assembly, number of array to with this direction and number of array to height direction, at the end, this kind of shape created as an assembly, okay? so. Let's take a look at this case. This is Conier's real product. Conier company really manufacture and sell, install this truss wall system. So this building design is very roughly made design just for demonstration purpose. So take a look. This is cotton wall system, some arc shaped wall. And this Conier truss wall system defined by Revit family editor in this way and installed to this assembly surface. 
like this way, okay? Height and number of vertical mullions. So installing this uh, trustworthy system in Revit project like this way, okay? Making its height, appropriate height and the geometric shape followed by the arc line. So this is the Revit render output 11 years ago, okay? Another render from interior. And next example, we'll see after, after the break, okay? Let's take a look at second uh, Cotonol example number two, parametric modeling demonstration. At this time, not Revit, it's Bentley architecture, okay? In parametric modeling world, there are really uh, high performance system named CATIA, nowadays DASO systems, and Gary Technologies made some custom application named Digital Project CATIA base. But there is another one, Bentley system, GC, okay, Generative Components. That is the Bentley uh, systems parametric modeling tool, very complicated, some script language based parametric definition and very, very powerful tool. But anyway, 11 years ago, I was in charge of Bentley system. So let me show you some little bit more detail about this Cotonel system, how to define in a uh, parametric way. Okay, thanks to my colleagues, ben, uh, Rabbit, Family Editor, and others all have done by, uh, at that time, Georgia Tech Digital Building Lab. But this is Bentley example. Okay, at first, take a look. Corneo 200, sorry, 2800 trustworthy system, okay? This one has front mullion and rear mullion and horizontal frame, okay, mullion and window system, window panel, and there is a web, okay? Moon cut, half moon cut web to connect front and rear mullion system. So this is section profile, okay, in very detail, manufacture, for manufacturing system, and this is elevation. So at first, plan how to make this one in parametric way. Component-oriented approach for 200, sorry, 2800 trustworthy system. At first, basic section, section profile in plan geometry. Next one, front and rear mullion, their assembly, front and rear, and the connection web, okay, web geometry. So all they loaded into one, one of the main part. Actually, this is assembly, okay, assembly from those subcomponents, but this is still a part, okay. This part can be joined with another section profile, other section profiles. For example, horizontal mullion and webs, connections, and wall surface. So this is final component, final project. What if you want to define arc wall or some curve wall, any different type of shaped walls? And then this one going to applicable to different assemblies like this way. So this is fundamental component-based approach for defining parametric model. So let's take a look. This is front mullion. Front mullion's height can be defined in this way, user input, okay? How about real mullion? Exactly same to the front mullion, okay? And then you don't need to touch real mullion's height. What you need to control is front mullion's height, one user input, okay? And then you can control like this. Secondly, you need to put distance constraint for this web distance, okay? So you can control specific with specific numbers or mouse click, and then the number of webs can be defined automatically like this way, okay? 
Next definition is the angle of installation. If the angle is zero, this one going to be looking like this, okay? But usually we have the angle. But this one should be flat. Why? Because this is, of course, a glass panel, okay? Bending glass, too expensive, okay? So that is why we have to always use flat glass system, okay? So flat surface, but angled. They are looking totally free form, okay, in some distance. Anyway, they should be controlled by user input, but they all something relative. What if you want to control this one only, and all others have equal to this angle, and then they can be controlled in easy way, okay? So if you change the angle or height, relation, you can get this kind of equations and you can get some, some angled horizontal millions and so on. Let me show you one minor but critical example when you deal with this kind of parametric definition. Take a look, this horizontal million. This one has angle, angle cut, okay? If this horizontal mullion always 90 degree cut. In this angle, there should be some gaps, okay? That kind of gaps sometimes make some uh, unstable problem, structural problem, or some leaking rains, whatever, some problems. Anyway, we need to cut exactly based upon angle okay, of this component. So how to resolve this problem? How to make proper angle cut for this horizontal million? That was the question according to this angle. So actually in this kind of representation, it looks complicated, but just a middle school level mathematical definition, okay? middle school level equations. So lengths can be defined A, B, C, and D. They all equal. Angle can be defined A equal B. And C equal half of B, okay? A, B, and C. So what if the angle arrow, I mean angle A, A dash is kind of very narrow. In that case, angle cut going to be narrow. What if A2 dash wider angle. In that case, angle cut going to be kind of bigger. So all the equation totally based upon this. So in the definition, this is the shape definition of uh, horizontal mullion on top view. So this angle can be defined in this way. Okay, unfortunately this angle defined in this way, okay, counterclockwise. So if we make 10 degree, this one going to be 350 degree. That is why we need to put this kind of equation. But anyway, A1 lengths all relatively defined from one single user input, this one, this angle, okay? And then we can control the lengths according to precisely defined angle and the mullion angle cut, okay? So this is the preview of the final assembly component, Windows installation, and installed, followed by this arc wall system. So length, angle, diameter, coincidence, sweeping along paths, all parametric constraints and features used in this Bentley system. So this is kind of property view how many components and their angles visited, defined in this way. So this is project view, something like Revit's project view. This is Bentley system 11 years ago, and some brief visualization for this real installation, okay? Let me quickly show you demonstration video, okay? Th the reason for this video presentation is this one 
is same approach to the Revit family editor and Revit, but totally different interface. This is Bentley system, okay? Parametric Cell Studio at the time, something similar to generative components. Take a look. Front height, user input, and rear height exactly equal to the front one. But if you type your user input, that one going to be changed like that way, okay? So undo that and go back, same to front one. At this time, change front one to 20 and then rear mullion also changed exactly same to the front one, okay? change 20 to 15 and equally change the real one and change the view, right view. And at this time, click the mullion web and it's constrained. Take a look, basic distance and the last point distance predetermined, okay? So if, if, I ch if you change the gap, Mullion gaps will change, but this one has some structural problem. So if you change the gap from starting point, shorter than before around here, and then a lot of webs going to be installed in automation like this <laughs> until the end point, okay? This is fundamental approach of parametric modeling. Okay, next example will show you its installation, physical installation, horizontal mullion. So a all they are pass definition. And this is solid object. So clicking pass and starting point and simply followed by the pass line. And then this one automatically cut by the equation that I show you in the slide and all the horizontal bars going to be installed like this way, okay? This is sort of parametric approach to define this structure. Take a look, angle cut or well-formed and installed based upon this uh, user input for this one. So installed and measured, okay, until the end point. Okay, the third example will show you the final assembly, okay? This is the top view of installation. So if you click the angle, the first angle value can be defined. Actually, this is 3D view like this, okay? Just no windows installed. But anyway, frames, mullions, all installed. But in top view, we can now control the angles. So take a look. The first one angle has 350. And the second and third one, all exactly same to the first angle, okay? That means if you just change the first angle, all others accordingly updated. So if I change 355 and then 3D model going to update total, exactly same to 355, except this part, okay? This, is, this one has some different definition. So this kind of modeling approach already demonstrated in this way 11 years ago, okay? So actually this is not up to date and some cutting edge, but I think this example is good to beginners for parametric modeling. And also today's lab exercise, you are in charge of making something like this using Cotoner system in Revit and Family Editor. For parametric design, parametric modeling, you have to think first, okay? Very important. Before mouse click, not only in a designer's standpoint, but also in engineer's standpoint, okay? You have to define your geometry in engineer's standpoint or mathematics perspective, okay? I mean, equations. This one should be 
equal to this or half of this or some kind of sine curve, cosine curve or tangent, perpendicular, 90 degree, orthogonal, whatever it is, you need a plan. Okay? Without plan, you cannot define anything. It's just a geometry done by 3D Max or SketchUp. So that is why parametric modeling sometimes, at first, especially at first, it's very looking hard, difficult. But we have to get this, okay? Okay, so far we have walked through how to use BIM approach for your design. You know how to model this building, roughly, okay? Also, today's live exercise, you are in charge of making some finalized building design, including some interior design, ceiling design, lighting design, and so on. But the problem is, what's next? So far, we have learned Revit-based, BIM-based design, but actually, in terms of BIM and application, that's just an initial point of BIM application. There are amount of unexplored world in BIM and applications. BIM-enabled design done by architects, done by designers, that's just start point of building information making, okay? How to use such information? How to apply those collected information for what? For construction, for maintenance, for management, for better design, whatever, okay? So what can I do for better design? We do design using Revit, what's next? Let me show you some brief cases, okay? some examples that I have done or now I'm still working on, okay? The first one is Georgia Tech's Digital Building Labs U.S. Courthouse Design Automation, okay? At the time, around seven, eight years ago, very famous architect firm, H3, Parkinson & Will, or some other companies designed U.S. federal building federal government building, courthouse. United States, very huge country. So in every year, in average, seven new courthouse planned and built, okay, every year. So seven courthouse per year in average. Anyway, when architect design courthouse, design alternatives using Revit or any other BIM tools, we got Revit model, IFC model, and analyze space program, circulation and security, energy analysis, and cost estimate, several ways. And then we suggest which design is the best option for this courthouse, something like that, okay? Let's take a look at some more examples. This is one small example of this kind of design analysis. The first one is area calculation. Take a look. This is room object in Revit. Its area is here, 189. This area computed by internal walls area. But you have to know that there is wall. How about wall, construction walls area? Center line of the wall returns this area, okay, 201. But actually there is standard, NC BOMA standard. BOMA means building owners and management association. In terms of their definition, some walls should be used for internal wall, sorry, internal line, but some, some side, center line, some, something outer wall, okay? Very complicated even by human, very time consuming and, and complicated. But thanks to BIM application, we can make this kind of precisely measured area, usable area, okay? This one looking very small difference. What if thousands of spaces in a building, several thousands of square feet different, okay? Why, why it's important? Leasing fee, okay? How much money you have to pay for this area, 1,000 bigger, smaller, 
money is different, okay? That's why it's critical. So this kind of application we developed. And this is space program review report, Excel file. This one doesn't written by hand. I mean, it's not manual. Automatically generated Excel file from BIM tools, okay? Auto-generated. Rabbit and BIM tools know how many courtrooms, how many office area, how many parking space, building ratio, how many elevators defined in this building, and make this kind of Excel report comparing two concepts, two designs, okay? We can compare two designs. This is Art1, Art2, okay? So easily compare by numbers. Circulation checking using auto-generated graph. Number of tons, walking distance, special depths, height, area, visibility, all they are measured and counted by computers from specific space to other space. Very detailed. So also analyzed circulation and security. This is sort of security analysis example. In courthouse, there is restricted zone for steps, attorney, judges, public zone for public, and secure zone. Secure zone means, you know that in US drama, some prisoners with FBI or US marshal, very securely handled corridors, circulation paths. They all separated and secured, controlled. We can take a look. It's correctly defined or some problems. For example, public secure, or even restrict secure, they don't overlap each other. That's the rule, okay? So we can review in this way. And also energy analysis, as well as circulation visualization analysis. For what? For choosing the best option among various design alternatives. So all they are looking something coarse, but they all Revit model, okay, at the time, 2008. Revit models, several design alternatives, but at the end, this design selected because this one has most efficient and most secured, no problems in circulation, and so on, okay? And the committee picked this design for real construction for Ohio State, Toledo City, okay? So that's probably constructed. Okay, so far we have reviewed some examples. Before getting started lab exercise, let me quickly show you another case in detail. Okay, in today's lab exercise folder, you can find out data Revit application. Let me show you this presentation quickly, okay? Simply because this one, this one's, take a look this model, what is this? This is our building, okay? College of Human Ecology building. By using BIM application as an extension of BIM, this one designed by Revit, okay? Intentionally. So, how to use this BIM model for better design? Let me show you one example, one case. This one done 2014, represented in international conference done by my graduate students. Take a look, demonstration of BIM enabled quantitative circulation analysis using better language. Better language is BIM enabled scripting language for doing something like this. Okay, some background and some slides simply shows you design review is very time consuming and critical for better built environment. So by using BIM, we can take advantages of quantities, okay, numbers we can get from the building. This is our building, okay, College of Human Ecology building. Three colors, which means food and nutrition, fashion, and interior architecture design departments, three departments. How to allocate, how to make special program for better layout, better efficient circulation, and so on. So we reviewed 
by using numbers from BIM model, okay? Quantities. So circulation, special program review, and so on. So we made some BIM-based mechanism for design review using better language and returned output. Anyway, at the end, take a look. We made some uh, mechanism for analyzing circulation and special program. This is our floor, okay, level five, library and computer lab. So this one can be analyzed in terms of circulation. This is auto-generated graph, okay? So thanks to this graph, we can get how many spaces, how long distance we have to walk for entering or exiting the space, and so on, okay? So we can get average walking distance for inter architecture department, average walking distance for fashion department, average distance or total distance for food and nutrition department. Of course, they are located below uh, floors, so kind comparatively short distance, but we don't know how much. So this one exactly returns the numbers. So this is the picture of the reconstruction. Based upon this query, we can get some numbers, okay? So this is the final number, okay? For the design alternative one and two, we can easily compare those two design alternatives. Accordingly, this one looks something efficient or short walking distance, little bit short. It doesn't mean that this one is good design, but we can figure out how many or how much numbers different from those different alternatives. Formally, in conventional CAD approach, if we have many design alternatives, how to determine which one is better? Just to take a look and we have to depend on some architect's knowledge or their speech or they are something special, unknown, black box knowledge, okay? But thanks to BIM, we can visualize like this using chart, design art A, B, C, which one has longer distance, longer distance, average distance, total distance, total walking, was the shortest and, and the longest, and so on, okay? We can easily compare them. For three departments, an entire uh, passengers, walking distance, and so on. Okay, this is a brief overview for the BIM application. Let's move to the lab exercise, okay?